you got so much to give the kids, plus you have the curfew of, you know, is it 10 o'clock except on the 4th of July or whatever the time is. So, but to go, there's been talking about, uh, about enforcement. So just a little while ago, you increased the fines for like abandoned boats and stuff like that. Why did you do that? For a deterrent? To make the penalties? What, is the, what are the penalties right now if you get caught shooting fireworks after hours? <coughs> is it the standard yeah. 100, 200, or whatever it is? I don't think there's a minimum I'd have to look, but I think it's just a standard. It falls under the, the general fine, which would be up to $500. Okay. I, don't, I don't know there's a minimum. Okay, so why not stiffen the penalties to make sure people get the message that if you're going to shoot them afterwards or shoot them before, that you can discharge them or shoot them on the 5th or 10th or whatever it is, why not increase those? One of the turns, like you get caught crazy in the state lines, automatic confiscation. Is that in the city ordinance? Or is it up to the officers of the court's discretion? You get somebody that shoots them at 10, 15 at night when they're supposed to stop at 10, somebody calls the police, they go there, they see them, confiscate them. <coughs> then people might not get the message and that will help the people that are frustrated because they're shooting late. I'm sure the police are going to respond just like they do the other calls of nuisances. They're going to be there as soon as they can. They're going to be able to see if there's a firework that's smoking or whatever that they were. They can talk to the people. They may lie, may not. But then why not increase the fines to send a message like you do, like you did here two to four weeks ago? That's a possibility. Yeah, I would agree, and I'm not just you know, and I and I think you make a good point. I think the only thing that I would point out is that in a city our size, fireworks and police calls probably have a different priority. And I agree. Yeah, you know, that. that's that's the hard part. Right. We put we kind of put the police officers in you know, a little bit of a disadvantage when they have other and more important calls to get. To. They, so that's why it's harder to enforce. Right. And yeah. and I totally agree with that. I'm not saying yeah. that you know if they're on a. Somebody's breaking and entering, they should right. stop that and go to a thing. Right. But how often is that going to, I mean, I don't know how many police are on patrol and all that kind of stuff. Sure. I, I know, but I, sure. I'm just saying that if they yeah. get a call yep. and they can respond, is the Sydney ordinance to whether they can confiscate them they can, and say, look, you know the rules. It's right. been posted on Facebook, whatever like that. Maybe stiffen the penalties like there's, the penalties are stiffened for other things. I mean, I love 4th of July, but when it's 10 o'clock, I'll quit. If it's midnight, I'll quit. It's just the way it is. Um, I think that's it for the movement. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chris Collins, 1725 Ella. There's a couple things that came to my mind during the discussion. Um, I do have, co last year I had customers that showed up every day, they discharged every night, and they come back and bought more. So people do discharge every night. Even if they have a budget, they usually go over the budget, and they admit that themselves. Um, if it's hard to enforce, why not extend the shooting days? That way the cops don't have something to enforce. The biggest issue that I, I, I see, or the biggest complaint, is the fireworks being discharged after hours when they're not supposed to be discharged. So give those that love them the chance to, the, to, to shoot them. Um, they have the right to be able to do stuff too. I mean, give them six days or seven days to shoot, you got 359 days without them. I mean, it, it, look at the poll. It was 52% that, that wanted it. So, uh, and yeah, so... That was a couple of thoughts that I had. Thank you. I sat on the committee that brought the original one in, and you got these people over here that only wants it two days. You got the people over here that wants it two weeks. Now, what we tried to do was four of sat down. We tried to bring it to where we could satisfy everybody. And I'm telling you, you can't do it. But we tried to bring it down to a reasonable amount both ways. So I'm going with the original one six days and six days. And, and 
That's, that was our compromise. That's, that's what we tried to do to be fair to everybody. But like I said, you know, if it's left up to me, one day. But I, I did go with the six days, six days. Just wanted you guys to know where our thinking was when we did this. We we're trying to, to satisfy everybody, and it just don't happen very often. <laughs> Okay, any more discussion on this amendment? Shalina McGuire, 722 North 7th. So I just wanted to come up here and tell you originally when I was up here, I told you guys that we had only had like 12 calls at the police department, or we had made 12 calls at the police department, and I was wrong. Because after I got back to work, I thought, not everybody puts it under fireworks. Some people put it under ordinance violation. And so I found out that there was over double what I originally had told you guys. So I just wanted to point that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you very much. I believe one of them was mine at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's not, not too bad for 20 plus years. <laughs> All right. We're going to vote. Okay. I was wait to see if anybody else was coming up. Okay, Margaret Haight, 104 West Granville. And actually, before I get started, first thing I want to tell you is how much I appreciate the fact that we get to come forward and speak publicly at this city council meeting. A couple of weeks ago, I was requested to go testify at the state capitol because there is a bill that's been introduced that they are trying to eliminate part of it. They're trying to eliminate public hearings at the county planning and zoning level. So it is so important that we have these public hearings and I really appreciate that this council still allows people to come forward and speak our opinions. So thank you. Now, I have the minutes from this last fall when the committee had their meeting on revisiting the fireworks. So at that time, Councilman Esker noted he had heard from one of the largest vendors, the Knights of Columbus, who stated the extended sale time made it difficult for them to find volunteers to run the fireworks stands, and it did not make a big impact on additional sales. So I think the first thing that's coming to my mind is, if this is, the extended time is so good <coughs> for the vendors. First, we gotta address just Mr. Ruse. I'm, <coughs> Okay. I'm going to get there. Good. Sorry. All right. That's okay. Just yes. got to be fair because that's kind of what I've... I'm, I'm, I sound like an attorney now. I, I no, get it. I'm, I'm, I've, got, I've got a point to make here. But anyway, um, so... No, I've lost my train of thought. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> anyway, so they, they did not make it... Oh, yes. I'm just wondering why there are not more vendors here in support of this rather than just this one vendor who originally had requested from Mr. Fralin that you guys extend this to the eight days. So with that said, um, just because people don't show up at this council meeting does not mean that they are in favor of the current ordinance or that they are in favor of this six day proposal that you're making as a compromise. And I think one of the issues is that uh, I think a lot of people, they didn't realize two weeks ago that you were addressing this issue yet again. So I went out and some other people and we have been taking a petition to get signatures from people that says, I want our fireworks law to go back to, this is discharging only. I don't think anybody really cares how long you sell these things for, but just to discharge them from July 1st to July 4th. So I got, I got quite a few signatures, and these are from all over town. And in fact, um, I was going up to total strangers in the grocery store and just asking them, do you live here in Beatrice? And if they said yes, I showed them my little folder, and very enthusiastically, people were wanting to sign. And also, I got a lot of thank you for doing this. So, after how I... How many you got, Mark? How uh, many? That's what I was curious, how many signatures? Yeah. Um, probably around 100. 
Now, I made copies of these. Well, most of us, I've, I've been handed a few that I don't have copies of, so I can hand them to Aaron if you guys, it's names and addresses. So if you want to see them, I will be glad to hand those copies over to Aaron. Can we add ours to the first? Can we file at the city clerk's office for a legal petition before you keep doing that? Anyway. Mar Margaret. Yes, yes, yes. Does, does that include the, the list that I yes. gave, well, gave you, you know, when you said that you had about 100? Yes, I think that would include probably those 33, 34 that you had. Okay, thank so, you. Anyway, um, so then this morning I sat down and I took the time and I looked at all the addresses <coughs> just to see what, you know, what, what wards are these people in. And then I wrote them all down and then I tallied them up and the winner is Ward 1. I have 42 people here from Ward 1 that only want them to be discharged from the first to the fourth. The second one is Ward 4. There were 23 signatures there. And Ward uh, 2 came in next with 14 and Ward 3 came in with 10. So, so ward, ward 4, though, if you had my 30-some in there, would actually be higher. Yes, yes, because I have... See, and I had no idea. I mean, yes, we've got more here, too. But I don't know um, if these were all from your ward. Is that so this It was kind of, just a neighbor that okay. walked around all just right. a box so, around yeah, our that, that would yes. That would add quite a bit. But I know a lot of you, you, you judge by the contact that people make. That they, if, if they don't call you, if they're not showing up, they're not calling you. You think that their acceptance of the way it is or that they don't really care, but that's not true. I think a lot of people, like I said, they just, they don't know what's going on. They don't know that you're discussing this again, but I will also let you know, I know you guys are all busy. It's not just showing up twice a month at these meetings and being on these committees. Some of you still work. so. I've actually been trying to be considerate and not, because I have little pieces of paper <coughs> with all your names and phone numbers and emails that I carry around in my purse. So when these issues come up, I'm more than happy to hand them out and say, here, contact your councilman. So I'm trying to be kind to you guys and not have everybody do a barrage of phone calls to you. So that's why I thought, let's do the signatures. People will, people will sign. But if you guys want me to go back to handing out my pieces of paper and having everybody call you instead, so you won't say, well, I really didn't get much response on this, I can see that that will, <laughs> will happen. And Rich can be bothered again while he's eating his prime rib dinner. <laughs> good prime rib dinner, but Margaret sure was. <laughs> well, I definitely, like I told you last time, I always appreciate when you come up, you've always got some good points to make. Um, the one thing I will say is you must be handing them out because I got more issues about a topic that's not on tonight's agenda compared to fireworks and UTVs combined. I'm sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> no, what, what did you... It may be about chickens. <laughs> more about chickens than I have fireworks and UTVs. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank that's you. it. And just for a point of clarification from everybody, we always accept written testimony. So, I mean, you know, sometimes we limit maybe discussion to five minutes, but we also, like anything else, we accept written, uh, like you said, can you hand those in to Aaron? That is absolutely true. You can always add more to written testimony. We'll accept it, so just so you know. Do, do you want to see the copies of all these signatures that, of people? That is completely up to you. Okay. Yep. All right. Margaret, I think I think we uh, Margaret, I think we all trust that you have those signatures. We don't need to see them. <laughs> now I know what you're doing while you're waiting on lunch. I do have one question. What before you sit down, do you have one question? Do you see some other way uh, that we can use as a council to get the word out on whatever the hell we're talking about at that time other than all the places we're putting it right now it shouldn't be all on your shoulders or somebody you know what i mean yeah i mean it's, 
I mean, there's a point at which if people are interested, they have to look, you know, right? Because we provided a number of places. Hey, Terry, it's not part of the agenda amendment. Okay, never mind. <laughs> it's been a little bit of heaven. All right. Yep. That's right. Two weeks. Okay. Anybody else? If, okay. Hi, my name is Nico Hightower. I'm at 1105 North 19th Street. Um, I hadn't planned on speaking tonight. I didn't even know that this was a topic of discussion. Um, I get what people are saying about how people will go to other communities and purchase fireworks and come back and shoot them. And um, I like the idea of, of your amendment of offering more days to sell the fireworks, but fewer days to shoot them. Thank you. Um, I have family members. I have post-traumatic stress disorder. And I have animals that suffer extreme anxiety. Um, and it's not just at the 4th of July, it's at other times when people would light off fireworks and it's thunderstorms, okay? So um, not even people caused events. But I will tell you, I was really disappointed when we extended the time for shooting off fireworks here. Um, I only moved here just a few years ago. Um, but. I have to medicate my dogs. They are extremely anxious. Um, I have to drive out into the country somewhere so that they can use the bathroom. Um, and so any kind of amendment where we're gonna shorten the days, i fully aware that people are still going to do it, but not as much. And I would like to also maybe consider, um, since we're expanding time for sales to benefit business as well as tax money coming into our community. Um, what else can we do to help those who suffer during this whole experience? There's animals and there's people that are affected by this. And is there anything that can be done uh, to support that? Something to consider and keep in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We're voting on Councilman Rue's amendment. Gentlemen, your vote, please. And that fails six to zero. Okay. Or six to one, I'm sorry. Thank can't, you. Can't read. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Make it noted that you yes. voted for your amendment. Yes. And, and by the way, I can tell you my kids were probably underprivileged because they do not have a thousand or a two thousand dollar budget for fireworks ever. Just don't do Mickey, all right? Wow. Okay. So now we are back to the original um, uh, ordinance that was presented and read for the first time two weeks ago. And so we're here one more time, and then it'll be one more time after that for the third reading. So. Um, is there further discussion that we haven't mentioned on this particular ordinance by the council first? Mr. Mayor, would, I would like for uh, Tobias to cover the steps we're changing from what we had to okay. what we're going to okay. so everybody understands. Perfect. Good, 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 good point. From what we have today? To what is proposed to go to on the original amendment. Let me just make sure I have it correct here. So what we have today, today we allow the sale of June 28th through July 4th, and we allow the dis discharge of June 28th through July 5th. That's what we allow today. The proposal that has been presented is for the sale and discharge both to be June 29th through July, excuse me, yeah, June 29th through July 4th. So it goes, we lose one day of sales at the beginning, one day of sale and discharge at the beginning, and one day of sale and discharge at the end. So June 28th goes away, and July 5th would go away on the proposal. Any other discussion from the council? From the public? If not, 
Gentlemen, your vote, please. And this is just for the second reading. Correct. And that passes six to one. It's so ordinance number 247, an ordinance to amend section 9130 of the Beatrice City Code regarding when the, the sale and discharge of permissible fireworks are permitted within the city to repeal all other conflicting ordinances or parts of ordinances and provide for publication in electronic form and for an effective date of this ordinance. It will be read for the third and final time. What is it on March? Fourth. Fourth. <coughs> okay. Okay. We'll move on to discussion reports. And we have one discussion, and that's from the city administrator's monthly report. Yeah, a couple of highlights I want to point out in there. Uh, the Kensington. So it's one of the big projects we have that we're working on. Uh, the developer that we've selected, Hoppy Development, they have selected their in, or their architect, that being Ali Pointer. Uh, Ali Pointer is working on right now their schematic <coughs> design of the building. In fact, they will be down tomorrow taking measurements and looking throughout the, the Kensington building. Uh, they're expecting schematic design to take through mid-March before we move on to the next phase of, of design and, and that particular project. Um, the raise grant, so we're working on our raise grant for our CAST initiative. Uh, that is due next week. And so we are having weekly meetings with um, Merchant McIntyre and with Olson's, putting together the presentation and the report that we'll be submitting. Um, still working on getting all the final pieces put together, but uh, it's coming together quite well. So that'll be due next week. And then the elementary school sites is another one of those projects out there that people want to know about. Uh, we did do an <clears throat> RFP for a master plan on Lincoln and Paddock Lane. We got five responses. And so the committee will be reviewing those uh, this week and hopefully bring back a recommendation to this body relatively soon uh, to select a firm to help us put together a master plan on those two sites as we continue to move forward with, with redevelopment. So other questions anybody might have? How many did you say you had? Five. Five. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some you know, some you haven't heard of. I mean, it's a little mixture of both, so. Okay. Well, it's a good turn. Good. Yeah. yeah. Right. Are we getting closer on, oh, sorry. Sorry, go ahead. Are we getting closer on 100% design for the, uh, for the road construction? Uh, we're still at 70% right now, and so we're still working on those final details. We've had some uh, meetings with the utility companies to make sure they're all out of the way. Uh, so we'll work on putting those together. The next thing you'll see out there is our water department installing our water main on along 33rd Street down to about the cemetery entrance because there are some long um, service lines out there that are private and they'll kind of be in the way once construction happens, trying to locate them. And so we'll clean it up. We'll install our part of our water main, hook them over to our new water main so that way those are out of the way, but uh, we're still waiting on the final set of plans um, again, we're hoping to go out the bid next month. We'll be close. We will be. Good. Good. Uh, first, I apologize for not, you weren't here yesterday and I couldn't do it today, so otherwise I'd probably got answers to this. There's just a couple of things in your report that I really appreciate every month you're doing. Um, on page eight, where, where we're talking about concrete construction, 13th Beaver Oak, we also talked about the month of February, getting the neighborhood together. Okay, uh, I just want to make sure we're still going to do that before we start tearing up the road today. or something. Okay, trying to right. try and get that scheduled. Okay, appreciate it. And then right below it, um, major street project. Okay, we and when when we approved the budget, we had inside that budget a street project that ranged from 750 to 1.1 million. Everybody remember that? Okay, but we didn't really designate exactly what that was going to be used for because we were throwing it, throwing around, well, do we do, uh, do we complete the final design on the downtown and the 136 bypass, spend the money to do that, or, and I'm going from memory here, or do another section of Lincoln Street, all right? And we continue <coughs> to have that on your report. It's in the budget. Um, it says we're going to do something in the summer of 2024. Um, Everybody knows how I feel about those issues, okay? So I don't need to go into detail about that, but um, uh, I feel different now since we, um, we, we talked to Merchant McIntyre here a, week, a meeting or two ago, and they said that the final design on anything downtown is not necessary for the raise grant, 
all right? That made an impact on me. Why, do, why spend the money if we're not gonna get it done, okay? So I'm like backing off that, all right? Um, but I would say, uh, just speaking for me, I'm only one dude here, uh, just speaking for me, I would like us to, to decide what we're gonna do with that money. I would like you to come up with some options, you and Bob come up with some options about what you think we should use that money for so that we can discuss it and decide what the heck we're gonna do with it. Okay, and I, I'm, again, I'm just speaking for me, I don't know how anybody else feels about that, but that made a major difference to me. Those guys know the grant and the raise grant way better than I do, for sure. Maybe not you and Taylor, but way better than I. So uh, there's no sense pushing to try to do that, in my opinion, uh, if we can use some money someplace else in, in the community and, and not have to spend it on something that maybe isn't gonna get done for a lot more years. So I just wanted to bring that up. But I would like to see, it, again, just for me, Bob, that um, if we could come up with projects that would fill that void right there and decide whether or not we're going to do those. Okay, those are the only two things. Okay, seeing nothing else, we are gonna go into the executive session to discuss real estate. There'll be no decision made. Mr. McLean, <laughs> please take us into executive session. I move the Beatrice City Council go into closed session at 7.55 p.m. for the protection of public interest to discuss <coughs> real estate. Second. Vote, please. That passes 7 0.